Alright guys, I wanted to do a little bit of video here on my printer and uh, kind of show you a little bit of what I've done. Um, it's definitely not perfect at all. I'm constantly evolving with this thing. So for my triple Z system, I've got a very similar setup to the Hydra. And uh, I use uh, a block here with a magnet underneath, a cupped magnet and a console ball and then more magnets up on the top and the ball just uh, just sucks to that magnet inside there and that's what holds it down and the Hydra uses uh, 45 degree linear rails uh, here and here and a straight one in the back and that's to control the lateral movement uh, however since since these bolts are about 35 millimeters in and deep on this plate it's such a long distance from that linear rail that uh, any slight movement in that linear rail will translate into lateral movement of this bed. Ideally these posts need to be in the corner and the linear rails need to be as close to that post as possible so that you've got a, a better mechanical advantage. Um, so you know the depending on the play that you have in that linear rail or that carriage uh, it's going to translate into a lot more movement angularly out here at this point. Um, so what I will end up doing is putting another rail here in the back. Uh, I'll have two of them probably four inches apart and there'll be a mechanism on uh, those two carriages will be joined in the back with aluminum plate and it'll come out to a a single point uh, sort of with a, a special uh, bar that goes in the middle to control the lateral movement and then the front here will just it'll be able to float um, so all the lateral movement will be controlled at the back with two rails and a plate uh, and right now I have a spring on here and it's basically sucking these lift arms toward the center to remove any play that might be in this assembly here that it really helps a lot for z-banding to to take that loss motion out. You're not you're just not gonna remove, you're gonna have some play in those carriages and it's gonna wanna it's gonna wanna move a little bit which will translate to some lateral movement here on the on the bed. Um, the system is really good for independent. I mean if, if you want to tilt this thing will tilt down I'm sure I could bring this guy all the way down to here and I could tilt independently each one a good a good 50 60 millimeters and it won't put anything in a bind. That's what's really good about this particular setup. So, um, but anyway, it's it, it could be improved. It's it's not what I'm looking for basically. So, now here last week, uh, I changed my my stepper mounts, um, and I'm using these um, I'm using these uh, aluminum plates. Um, Basically, I bought these hex standoffs in 60 millimeter long, and I cut them to the correct length. I tapped the threads all the way through, and I ran a, a bolt up through the bottom and up through the top. And the same thing for the bottom ones. There's three posts on the bottom. I'm using an S695 bearing uh, on the bottom and on the top, so I can run. Uh, bearings, smooth bearings here. I've got a, a F695 flange bearing plus a 695 bearing and another F695 flange bearing on the bottom and I'm just running a bearing stack. This has really good uh, it's really concentric so it doesn't wobble much. Um, if, if you want to run a toothed uh, idler you can put a motor pulley there um, but the problem I've had is that the uh, the, the the 10 millimeter belt tooth motor pulleys when you tighten them down with the bottom set screws the top runs out of that uh, of that tooth motor pulley so I had to pick the lesser of two evils and I'm going with the bearing stack with the teeth running right on the smooth surface I don't notice any issue with that I've tried this on many printers uh, tooth versus smooth and it seems like there's not a difference between the two. So I've got bearing stacks on here and um, uh, of course I'm using this uh, flex coupler here 
and I've noticed that the heat from this motor is dissipating much better now uh, before I had plastic here and maybe that was stopping the heat from moving but it sure seems like these are cooler now uh, with nothing underneath them so three plates and how I made these was I printed some templates with two millimeter holes and then I center punched it against this piece and then drilled them out. Well, it took me three days to make these things because when I, when I got done, the, the bearings didn't align. They were off ever so slightly and it just was no good. So I've got a whole set of these that's trash. And what I had to do was make the base first and then this next piece I had to drill the three main holes that's, that sandwich these together to the to the studs bolt them together and then through drill uh, the bearing locations and that made sure that these two pieces those bearings would be you know pretty much exactly on center they bolted up great you put the shaft in them and spin them and they spin free as can be but to do these separate without doing it with that method I found it to be near impossible to get aligned and the same thing with the top section you have to bolt it to the bottom section and then through drill it and so now these are all these are all on center um, so uh, these are supposed to be brass but th they did have a, a male thread on one end here and it just wasn't strong enough so I just cut them off drilled that you know uh, tap that straight through and then bolted it up this is one rigid piece right here I'm, I'm amazed at how strong this is um, so I've got three posts on the bottom and it's being in under compression with these two main bolts that go through all the way to the 2040 extrusion below and there's another bolt here in the back to bolt it down in the front which I do not have the hole yet there for that I've got to take this out to the garage and and drill those drill four more holes to hold this this uh, other side down so uh, this was my and and uh, it uh, pretty decent works pretty good anyway that's what I got